Hello, this is Dr. Hannah Asil, and this is the second part of questions and answers on organic nitrogen compounds for unit five of the A2 chemistry at Excel. So we're going to be talking about questions on amines, amides, amino acids, and proteins. So let us take a look at the questions. This is the first question here, aspartic acid and phenyl alanine are the non-systematic names of the two amino acids shown. Give the systematic name of aspartic acid. So first of all, we need to know how many carbon atoms. So this, of course, has four carbons. And this is an amine group on carbon number two. And I have two acids. So we say this is two amino butane diuic acid. Draw the structure of aspartic acid at pH 13. Again, we said amino acids at high pH. That means in basic conditions, the acid parts would be COO minus and the NH2 is the same as it is. Remember, we said amino acids can exist as bitter ions or as anions or as NH3 plus if we have uh, an acid medium. So this question says draw a diagram of this bitter ion of phenylalanine and use this to explain its relatively high melting temperature. Well, this is this bitter ion which exists in pH 7. So if we dissolve it in water, the acid part is in the form of COO minus, and the amine part is in the form of NH3 plus. Now, why does it have high melting temperature? We said because of the ionic bonds. So if one of them is positive and the other is negative, there will be ionic bonds with other molecules, and these are strong and need a high amount of energy to be broken. So the molecules are held together by ionic bonds with strong electrostatic attraction forces between positive and negative ions that need a lot of energy to be broken. Aspartame is an artificial sweetener which is derived from phenylalanine and aspartic acid. So we have this is aspartame acid catalyzed hydrolysis of this compound followed by chromatography can be used to confirm the identity of the two amino acids produced hydrolysis gives two amino acids and a third organic product identify the third organic product remember if we have a compound like this in which we have amino acid we have an amide linkage we have an ester linkage. Can you see them? Well, we need to break up the ester linkage, which is the part on the right with the OCH3, and we need to break up the amide linkage. This is what happens when we break up uh, by hydrolysis. So this is acid hydrolysis. That means what comes out would be the methanol from the CH3OH part, and then we have the parts in the middle. These would be in the form of acid or amine. Polyacrylamide and polyacrylic acid are water absorbent addition polymers. So they are addition polymers. They are made from this monomer. What is the IUPAC name for this monomer? How do we name this? This is, first of all, an amide. It has a C double bond ONH2, so that's an amide. It has three carbons, and we're going to start numbering from the C double bond O, and that means at carbon number two, I have a double bond. So this is two propenamide. Explain why the PAM that is drawn up there is able to absorb large amounts of water. Well, this has what? It has a double bond O and it has an NH. So these can form hydrogen bonds with the water. So it forms hydrogen bonds at the C double bond O and at the NH. So several hydrogen bonds with water. This allows it to be miscible 
with what? The repeat unit for a polymer found in instant glue is this. The structure of the monomer would be what? How do we get the structure of a monomer from a polymer? Obviously, this is an addition polymer, so it's uh, made from monomers that have a double bond. In order to get the monomer, you re remove the bond on the right, remove the bond on the left, and put a double bond in the middle. So this is my monomer. And the question is, which of these choices is this one? If you look at A, A is the choice that we should use. And this would be the monomer that would be joined together with many others like it to form the polymer on top. This compound is an addition polymer, again, and the average molecular mass is 90,000 of the polymer. Draw the structure of the monomer. Again, how do we draw the monomer? Remove the bond on the right, the bond on the left, and put a double bond in the middle. So this is the monomer. And then the question says, calculate the number of monomers needed to make one molecule of the polymer with a molecular mass of 90,000. So this was the monomer we try to find the uh, molecular formula of this monomer. So we count the number of carbons, hydrogens, nitrogen, oxygen. This is the formula of the uh, monomer. I get the molecular mass of that monomer. And we know how to get molecular mass. So molecular mass of the monomer is 111. And the question is, I want to know how many of them in the 90,000 molecular mass. So 90,000 over 111, this means that I have 811 of these monomers. And remember, he wants the answer to the nearest whole number. Okay, another question. State what is meant by condensation polymer. Again, what do we mean by polymer and what do we mean by condensation? Remember, a polymer is a long chain molecule made by joining many small molecules together. So these small molecules could be diamines or diacids or diacyl chlorides. The monomers have active groups on both ends and are joined together by the removal of small molecules. So if I want to join these two, the diamine and the diacid, to form a polyamide, we remove H from the nitrogen or H from the acid that uh, means I'm removing a molecule of water and I join the nitrogen to the carbon. So this is how the monomers are joined by removal of small molecules such as water. Then this question says the structure of nylon 66 is shown. Nylon 66 is made from two monomers. Did use the structural formula of these monomers. So, first of all, in order to determine the monomers, we need to break up the molecule at the amide linkage. So, the part on the left would be with acyl chlorides or with acids on both ends, and the other part would be with amines on both ends. And remember, the question is asking for structural formula, so we have to put it in the form of structural, not skeletal formula. When benzocaine, which is given, and procaine are hydrolyzed, one of the products formed is the same in both reactions. Give the product of the, uh, this uh, structure of this product. So when we hydrolyze benzocaine, we break up the ester linkage. And the other one, we also break up the ester linkage. But in that case, when we break up the ester linkage, both of them would be made from this uh, reactant. Then I remove the, I break up the ester linkage and I put an OH instead of it. Caffeine contains amide and amine groups. Another way of drawing the structure of caffeine is shown. So we can draw the structure of caffeine in which the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen are delocalized 
in the uh, five member ring. Explain what this diagram indicates about the bonding in caffeine, stating the effect on the structure of caffeine. So if we can draw it like this, this means that in the five-sided ring, the electron pair on the nitrogen is delocalized with the pi electrons of the double bond. And this makes the structure stable. It will also make all the carbon nitrogen bonds the same length. So just why caffeine is a much weaker base than a primary amine such as ethyl amine, even though the right hand ring has two amine groups. Now remember that being a weaker or stronger base depends on the availability of the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. So in ethyl amine, we're saying it's a much better or a much stronger base because the ethyl group is electron donating. So this makes the nitrogen have, it has its lone pair of electrons available to make a dative bond with the H plus ions. But the uh, structure on top, the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen, we said are delocalized in the ring. So they are less available to form a dative bond with the H plus ion. So they are a weaker base than something like ethyl amine. The repeat unit of a polymer has this structure. This polymer is formed from what? Well, you can see that this should be an addition polymer. So it is made from one type of monomer by the addition reaction. So that means that this molecule originally had a double bond between these two carbons and they were added together to form uh, the polymer by addition polymerization. How many different amino acids form the repeat unit of the polymer shown? Amino acids are uh, attached to each other by amide linkages. So each amino acid has an, an amide linkage to the next amino acid. So these are the amino acids that we have that are used to make this polymer. But then some of them are similar to the others. So the one on the left is similar to the one on the right. The blue one is similar to the other blue one and so on. So how many different amino acids do we have? We actually have a total of four different amino acids that uh, were joined together by peptide linkages or by amide linkages to form this polymer. Which pair of monomers could react to form a condensation polymer? First of all, we want condensation, and that means we need active groups on both ends. But what type of groups can we use to attach monomers to form a long chain? Remember, we cannot use the ones in A. Uh, B would not be a condensation polymer. C, that is the one that we can join together because we can join di diamines to diacyl chlorides. Each amine of one will attach to the uh, acyl chloride of the other to form an amide linkage. I cannot use D because amides, I can use acids, diacids, but the diamide cannot be used to make a polymer. It would not react with the acid group. Which type of compound cannot be a monomer? Again, we said monomers could be. Remember, we're trying to form polyamides. Polyamides can be from amino acids or from uh, diamines with uh, diacyl chlorides, but I cannot use amides as monomers. We can use monomers, amino acids, diacyl chlorides, diamines. Amides cannot be used to form polymers. Draw the structure of the dipeptide formed between phenylalanine and aspartic acid. Dipeptide means I'm going to join two of them together. 
So I want to join what? I want to join phenylalanine, the structure that you have up there, and uh, aspartic acid in order to form aspartame. So the structure of the dipeptide would be when I join from the amine group of one to the acid group of the other, this would form the peptide linkage required. Okay. Which pair of monomers can form this polymer? Well, obviously, this polymer, we're going to break the ester linkage, and each part would be, one part would be the diacid, the other one would be the dialcohol. So my monomers are these uh, choices. Remember, the part that has only O was originally the alcohol. The part that has the C double bond O was originally the acid, or it could be the acyl chloride. Draw the repeat unit of the polymer, polyamide, formed from the monomers shown. So I want to join these again. I would join from the amine of one to the acyl chloride of the other. So this would be my a repeat unit for the polymer formed. A polyamide has this repeat unit. Which of these monomers can form this poly polyamide? So again, we need to break it up and we can have the diamine, the benzene ring with the diamines, and the benzene ring with either diacyl chloride or diacid. So the choices that could be correct would be this one. Aspartame is hydrolyzed by hydrochloric acid. Again, if we hydrolyze this, that means we're going to break it up into uh, the different parts that were joined together. We break it at the amide linkage or the ester linkage, or both actually. So an amide linkage would be broken to form that part on the left. So uh, instead of NH, I have NH2, and the O would be an OH. And then the part on the right, again, the C double bond O would be acid. And I'm left with that methyl group down there. That methyl group was originally an alcohol, so that when it reacts with the acid of the other part, it forms the ester link. Again, what's the repeat unit of the polymer formed from this compound? So in order to draw the polymer, what do we do? The double bond in the middle becomes a single bond. We have a bond on the right and a bond on the left. So which of the choices is this diagram? Then that is A. That would be the structure of the polymer. Again, if I have this, this polymer formed by condensation reaction, and we're being asked, predict the structures of the two monomers that produce this polymer. Again, we break the amide linkage, and we want to form two amino acids. So breaking the amide linkage, the C double bond O will be an acid, and the other part on the left would be the NH2, and then the second unit would be this with the NH2 and the acid. Where you had C double bond O, that becomes an acid, and where you have an NH, that becomes an NH2. The diagram shows a repeat unit of an addition polymer used in some food wraps. It is formed from two different monomers. Which parts are two different monomers? If you look at this, these are the two parts that were two different monomers. And in order to get the monomer, we remove the bond on the right, the bond on the left, and put a double bond in the middle. So that means this would be one of my monomers, and the other one is the one on the right with a double bond in the middle. And that's the end of this part of the questions. Um, I hope this was useful to you. And uh, thank you for listening.